I think the biggest lesson that our team learned over the course of the semester is that sometimes you can get a prototype out, but the hardest part of engineering can be finding a way to test it and characterize it that will actually return meaningful data. Um, that's because this semester uh, we worked with uh, the micro air cycle system, which is actually a project that had been going on for several semesters before us and will continue after our team as well. But this semester our goal is to completely characterize the electrostatics of the device. Um, for those of you who haven't heard about it before, if you haven't made it to some of the past uh, senior design days, it's basically uh, uh, the prototype we have right now is a two-plate system that as you apply voltage, the plates come together very rapidly. And so um, this semester we had two primary goals. One was to address the discrepancy we noticed between the theoretical pull-in voltage and the one we were actually observing in lab. Um, the pull-in voltage being as you ramp the voltage up on the, the device, that number that gives you that sudden suck down um, between the two plates. Um, the other objective we wanted to uh, focus on was to characterize the actuation device throughout its actuation cycle. Um, so to tell us about who we are, um, I'm Brady Spinrath, and uh, Spin Moon and I worked on the experimental setups. Um, Michael Galwardi worked on uh, simulating and validating our data. Um, Brandon Guile uh, built some of the circuitry involved with our experiments, and Clement Wong handled uh, researching the theory and working on the methodology we need for the experiments. And we all worked together on all these experiments to actually do them and collect the data on top of our specialties. Um, so our first bit of progress was working on getting that pull-in voltage closer to what we expected um, between theoretical and the observed. Um, so we looked back at uh, our theory and we realized we were probably over-relying on console because our, uh, our simulated voltages were two orders of magnitude off from what we were actually seeing. Uh, so we researched the pull and voltage equation, looked at some of the factors that might be affecting uh, what was changing uh, that number. So when we started researching it, we noticed that the, some of the factors that could be influencing the voltage, the pull and voltage, we were actually unfortunately doing um, in our setup. So you can see here the difference between an old setup and a new setup. Um, now we're completely controlling uh, the dimension of the device, the spacing between the device, and the environmental factors, like the amount of air between the two plates. Um, the other one we looked at, uh, the other goal we had, was to characterize the actuation of the device uh, throughout its actuation cycle. So our device having two plates that get charged obviously looks a lot like a parallel plate capacitor, but the difference being, of course, with voltage, the plates move and the capacitance is always changing. Um, so we decided that we would use that calculation of capacitance to measure the speed and the distance as these plates move, because as they move, the capacitance changes. Uh, we couldn't use conventional methods to measure capacitance, though, because we're applying um, a, a high voltage AC signal across our device. You can't just hook that up to a capacitance meter without some bad results. Um, so we had to design a test circuit that would measure capacitance at many different point, points as the high voltage uh, volt, uh, changed across our device. So we developed what we call the pulse, pulse waveform method. And that is we put little square pulses on the overall charging signal so that at many different points, we can look at a rise time and a fall time and determine the time constant, measure the capacitance, and use that to relate distance. Um, so um, in, our, in conclusion, um, we got our theoretical and observed pull and voltages much closer together by both improving our theory and what we're actually working with. Um, we got them to within an order of magnitude from each other, so we think we understand that a lot better now. We also completely characterized the actuation, so we understand the relation relationship between uh, voltage applied and the change in distance you see. Um, we've improved our durability by improving our test setup and we can now characterize that durability by watching the test over time. And we've um, come to uh, some conclusions about the speed of actuation. Uh, we found our operating frequency is about 1 to 10 hertz, which is a little slower than we wanted. Um, so now we're looking forward for the next team to work on that multiplex system so that we can force the plates both down toward each other and up the other direction. Uh, so any questions? What's the application for this and who's the customer? Um, well, we've, we've been working on this for several semesters, so um, I kind of skipped over what we were actually doing. But this is a micro air cycle system that actually um, traps in a bit of air, um, if we can get a seal, and then um, you can press it to heat it up. And then we have a, uh, a thermal a heat exchanger. There we go. When you re-expand, that should amplify the cooling factor because of the, it's called reverse brain cycle. And it would cool air, um, and it's scalable. You have stacks of the R device. You know, cool anything from something small like a chip to a human body. You put it so it's like competing technology for the type. Uh, yes. Right. And last semester, we actually calculated the coefficient of <coughs> performance and stacked it quite favorably to traditional systems that use chemicals and other things like that. Okay.
We'd be happy to talk all about the whole system in terms of the Other questions? How, how mobile is this device, this error this setup? Is it, is it meant to be used, let's say, in a home or in a fixed structure, or can it be worn, let's say, within certain clothing? Yes, yeah, so that's the goal. Um, our prototype right now, when we look it up through an experimental setup, as you'll see, it outside isn't very portable, but the goal is to someday, you know, kind of combine all this into one thing. Maybe have stacks of these throughout clothing, maybe have them stacked against your computer chip. Um, I mean, the device itself, the prototype we're working with is only two centimeters by two centimeters. And it's a few hundred microns thick. So, I mean, it could fit almost anywhere. And you just, if you need a bigger application, you just get more of them together. And there were, there were previous teams that worked on this. Did your team have any conference calls or meetings with prior members in order to kind of get their input? Or yeah, I mean, uh, some of them are still on campus, so we were still meeting with them. Um, we had the benefit of last semester actually working with one of those teams for SD2. So, yeah, we got to a lot of input from the previous teams. Any other questions? Um, right now we can get it up to 10 hertz before we notice we don't get full actuation. But as I said, um, if we had a plate, if we had three plates instead of two, um, we could pull the one in the middle both back and forth, which we know would speed us up. And how much noise does it make? Um, like a like the sound that you would hear. Um, if we're running it at 300 hertz, you hear like a little snap, maybe not a, not that loud. Um, that might be because of the plexiglass we have set up. With a different setup, you might not hear that at all. The biggest challenge of moving to a multi plate system is the control of the dimensions. And in order to have, make sure that our data is what it should be, we really need to know the dimensions between the two plates. Because for all, a lot of us are EDs, we know how much of a difference that makes in the electrostatic equations. <coughs> Thank you.